So we've been seeing this for a couple of days. Well, yesterday I saw it for the first time that the Minister Without Portfolio and the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation with sector responsibility for land, environment, climate change and investments, uh, Mr. Daryl Vaz said he withdrew his interest in the Holloway lands the moment he learned of the objections raised by the managers of the Blue and John Crow Mountains National Park. So an interesting story. Mm. So cheap it is to, 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 to lease these lands, 120,000 Jamaican per year for seven point seven acres. acres. Yeah. But apparently, wow. Wow. Uh, Mr. Vaz is saying that he didn't know that there was any issue with it. And as soon as he found out that there was an issue, he withdrew. The opposition and some other folks are saying um, other different things. But the fact is that he withdrew, so he, he's no longer interested in leasing those lands. I and, 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 and people spoke out. And yeah. it's a new world. And you can see even on social media, a lot of people were saying, this isn't right. We need to know more. Mm -hmm. But also... I didn't get the memo that it was up for. I didn't know that either. That, so this is, I think that's the point. Because apparently it's a protected area or something. It like is that. a protected area um, and it's... Um, so then if it's a protected area, why would they lease it to anyone? Whether, whether Mr. Vaz or anything. I think protected World Heritage sites can be leased depending, as long as it's in line with... Um, yeah. But anyway, it's, li it's listed under the UNESCO World Heritage Site. Mm -hmm. um, the property falls within the Blue and John Crow Mountains National Park. So I guess if somebody was to lease it, it has to fall in line with the yeah. goals, mission. And I think that's what being. Mr. Vaz was also saying, that mm -hmm. what he was doing, um, apparently that obtains already up there. He went to the put up a cabin and do coffee and he says that the area is apparently used for that. But we will hear more. But as I said, the, mm -hmm. the story really is that he withdrew. He was um, going to put a cabin and, and yeah, plant coffee. coffee. That's what, that's what I, I think that's what I read. This is great news though. 5,000 airport workers get back their jobs. Mm. That's brilliant. That's great. Um, the country opened up on Monday, midnight Monday, the 15th, and I think we had six flights coming in on that day or something like that. There was a doctor from the United States who's never been to Jamaica. And she said as soon as she heard that uh, we opened up, she wanted to come here. Um, so it's great news for the, the tourism sector. Um, My question, were they checked at the airport for COVID? I don't know. I, I think they, 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 they were? were. Yeah. I, I Each asked, and every one yeah, of them? I think so. I asked the question if they were checked before they boarded the so flights where they, were, where they were coming from. And apparently the airlines are saying that they're not going to do that. Right. And then they also said you could go on the airline or, or on the plane um, negative. And by the time you get here. Well, yeah. Once you're, you're on the plane positive. with the holy food, the you're air positive. is just there yeah. in the plane. Circling. So let's hope that we, we got it right. The, and question, the question is, I mean, how are they tested? Is it just a temperature test? Are I'm they actually doing an actual COVID test? Uh, I'm not really sure about that. However, welcome all of our diaspora and our visitors to yeah, Jamaica. Man. And listen, if you have COVID and you're watching on One Spot Media, stay where you are, do not come. If you yeah. know you have it or you just had it, we don't want it. So it, just wait a it, while, it please. It looks like they were tested. At least two visitors with whom the Gleaner spoke believe that in-destination testing was critical, but felt that information that was given via the Visit Jamaica web portal should be shared with Jamaican immigration so that the processing would be quicker. Wow. Um, it was not an inconvenience being tested at the airport. It has to be done to ensure we're all safe here. Mm -hmm. So I suspect they were tested at the airport. Hmm. There you go. Okay. What's the third one? Online appointment system for blood drives. The National Blood Transfusion Service has an online appointment system to coordinate its blood drive activities. So people, you can visit the website at nbts.gov.jm. Click on the tab for appointment pre-registration. Um, you know, we really do need blood all the time. So although there is a kind of looks like everybody's been staying home and the blood bank wasn't getting enough, there's a big drive. Go out there and give blood. You never know who's going to need it. Um, yeah, so set up your appointments online. Again, nbts.gov.jm. Yep. And yeah, what else going on? Fourth one is um, very sad. 30-year-old man who allegedly sexually assaulted a 12-year-old um, twice last year and threatened to kill her family if she reported the offence will appear in the Lucy Parish Court this week to answer two charges of rape. Apparently he's a farmer from Burnt Ground in Hanover. Um, the child revealed details of the allegation. Um, apparently the mother was close enough and fast asleep. Uh, Reports are that an unspecified time in 2019, 
the child and her mom visited the accused house. Later, he awakened the child and allegedly told her he wanted to do whatever he did. She was sexually molested while her mother slept nearby. Whew, a 12 year old. And apparently he repeated the act on another visit. Wow. Well, let's hope that there will be justice. And to a lot of our viewers watching right now, um, many of you have been through this. We have been seeing and hearing the stories in the social media landscape, in the courts, in the newspapers. So if you're watching and you too are a victim and our children who are watching, if anybody's touching you in inappropriately, you feel uncomfortable, then please get on the phone and tell somebody. Tell a stranger if, if you don't believe whoever's at home is gonna believe you. Get up and tell somebody because there is support. And for those who are not getting the therapy from the victim support unit, please, everybody, if you're going to court as a child and you're uncomfortable facing the perpetrator, talk to the police that takes you to court and tell them that you don't want to face that person because there, there are things in place for you to not have to face it. Yeah. I'm really, 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 really begging everybody in Jamaica to start to stand up and allow young girls, young boys who are victims of rape to be able to speak and we need therapy. That is the most important thing. Help our people who have been victims to heal. We need more counselors out there. We need more sense for young people to get through this horrific situation yeah. and may there be may, may, may I pray for justice for this little girl yeah. and, and all the disgusting dirty men out there yeah, and right. dirty women that allow you're our right. children to face abuses your day will come yeah. God don't sleep by the way I just want to go back to us opening up um, the borders the borders unfortunately a passenger passed away um, right after this, she arrived in Jamaica. Um, a 62-year-old Jamaican woman who arrived on the Delta Airways flight from Atlanta collapsed in the immigration hall at Sangster. Um, the Ministry of Health and Wellness personnel on site made resuscitation efforts. However, the female was pronounced dead at Cornwall Regional Hospital at approximately 2.36. But it doesn't say um, why. The so, cause of death, isn't yeah, it? It's a Jamaican. Um, so condolences uh, to the to the family, and obviously we're very very sad about that. Final one: businesses, colleges plead with uh, the president of the United States to preserve work visas. Um, they argue that cutting off access to talented foreign workers will only further disrupt the economy and stifle innovation at a time when it's needed most. But influential immigration hardliners, normally aligned with uh, President Trump have been calling for stronger action after his prior visa restrictions didn't go far enough for them. Mm. Wow. So basically, they'll, they're, they're, they're going to be new restrictions on yeah. the student and work visas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's so interesting. This, this article here says, expected to be announced as early as this week will prevent others from following a similar path to the American dream. American dream way. You see what's going on in America? Mm. We're gonna try to go somewhere else, yeah? Our tenor we yard and build with country. Look to Africa where all the resources in the cell phones that we use and everything in the world is fed from the resources in Africa that was raped and colonized. We need to stop looking to America and looking to Europe for our, as our savior and our dream. Let's get real. Yeah. Let's get real, man. More anyway, more so some of your coffee. All right. you want some coffee? You want some of your this? coffee? Yeah. You sure? Let's take a break. Yeah. Somebody get him some coffee. No, no. I said I want your coffee. I want to see what still to come. All right. Come. Yeah, still to come. <laughs> we hear from a few Jamaican dads about their journey to fatherhood. But first, here is news in five. <laughs> 